Hey everyone, Coach Greg here. Welcome to Living Empowered. Hey, today I'm going to take a little bit different course. Um, I think I say that every time. Uh, today we're going to talk about character. Character and why does it matter? If you're adults, you're going, well, yeah, we kind of get that. Uh, but do you? Um, what The reason this came up, I, I just published a book called uh, Creating Young Men and Women of Character. It's on Amazon if you want to get a copy. Uh, it's doing more speaking with younger kids groups. But what I'm finding is everybody, I say, hey, I just launched this good book. Everyone says, oh, my gosh, that so much matters. And then on the adult side of things, it was for the kids. But on the adult side of things, looking at like the neighborhood posts and other people's posts and comments and conversations and behaviors generally out in society, I'm thinking this may be a conversation for everyone. Nobody's perfect. Uh, like I said, I learn a lot of this stuff by doing so. Uh, I wanted to bring this to you guys a little bit on the character topic. So. Hang on there. We're going to be right back. Grab a pen and paper. Take some good notes. I want you to take something away from today's conversation today. Um, something you can put into play immediately. You can share it with your, your family, your friends, your loved ones, whomever, but have a discussion. It's a pretty cool discussion. Always good to hear from the kids, too. If you have kids or whatnot, or even your friends group, if you're in a group of friends, uh, ask them, say, hey, this came up on uh, Coach Greg's show. What do you guys think? And then see what kind of answers people have. See what their perspective is. It can create some really fun conversation. So hang on. We'll be right back. everybody welcome back so so this whole character discussion what is it where did it come from um it, for me it came from and the book writing came from like, there was one final story that kicked this thing over the edge it's like a lot of things are in life you know they build up they build up they build up you're like that's it this needs to now happen um it came from for me i just talked about uh, my son is 14. We talk about manners, courtesy, the golden rule, how you behave, how you how you elevate above other people. And we make observations when we're out in public. Um, first person I have comment about is always me. I can say, oh, you know what? I just did this. Maybe I could have done this better by doing this. So uh, like everybody, I'm not above reproach either, but every opportunity is an opportunity to do one of two things, show your character positively or negatively in every situation. So, uh, you know, as, as we go around, I try to show them that and we see people doing things and I say, hey, what do you see there? Oh, you know what, this kid behaving that way or that adult acting like this or that. So it comes up a lot in life. And, and again, it's it's not because I speak to teens and things. Uh, if you're interested in speaking engagements, please shoot me a note, shoot me a text and email, but also um, companies and corporations as well. But also it's it's an adult thing too, because I see a lot of, there's a lot of change in society. We all see it, you see it on the news, you see it in the, the social media has created monsters for sure. So really the purpose of, you know, kind of today's conversation is providing some tools and insights and inspiration to, to really determine what your character is, how you can use it, how to maybe improve it, or at least be aware of, of it when you have a situation. Every situation is a situation to be a good person or not to be a jackass, really. Um, I heard a guy say that that's not the word he used, but he said, this is a good situation, a good opportunity to not be that person. I'm like, that's a funny way to put a perspective on it, but it was true because he could have been a real jerk and he wasn't. He's like, this is an opportunity for me to be better than that this time. And that's what the guy went. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So it, I look at it that way. So really in, in character development isn't a destination. It doesn't matter how old you are. You say, well, I've changed. I'm set in my ways. O only if you tell yourself that, only if you believe that. Uh, I believe the older I get though, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be a better person, a better dad, a better husband, a better educator, a better speaker, a better coach. And to do that requires, you know, self self reflection for one. 
self-examination and being, you know, being strong enough within your own character to say, Hey, you know, I have room for improvement and then know the people that can help you with that and give you positive reinforcements or say, Hey, consider this or that. So hopefully you get that from there. So it, it, it's really a dynamic journey. It's a dynamic journey, not a process that says, Nope, this is how I am. Unless you choose that. Everyone says to me, no, this is my way. I'm like, okay, you chose that way. You could also choose this way this time. It's a choice. Every single situation is a choice. You know that. So it's um, an unfolding of growth in opportunity. Um, so let's kind of get into this. So your character extends way beyond just your own personal development. It shapes the quality of your relationships with, you know, within your family, within a job, for kids at school, anywhere you're interacting on teams and sports and, and parents and sports, parents and sports are, can be really special. Um, I've been in sports, I'm a kid in sports, I've refereed or umpired in sports, and the most challenging thing in a kid's sport isn't the kids, it's the parents, because they start to show different character aspects, and like, wow, that was special. Um, you know, they forget that they're representing not only themselves, but their kids and their organizations. It can be challenging. So character comes out. So it's relationships, the, and the effectiveness of, say, your leadership. Are you leading your family? Are you leading a company? Are you leading a group, a small group, a kids group, a schools group, whatever it is, but the effectiveness of your leadership in, or matters for sure. And also the legacy that you leave behind. How are people going to remember you? What are you leaving behind for them? Oh, oh, he was a great guy. She was a great gal. She she helped the community. She loved other people. She you know, was giving or, you know, I got that guy was stingy, you know, not, not very friendly at the end of the day. You know what I'm talking, talking about you like that when you're done. Um, I always say that for me, the dash, it's, it's you know, you're born on this date, you're end on this date. The dash in the middle is your significance. The word I like to use there is significance. For me, it is. How significant were you? What did you do? What do you leave behind? You know, is in, in I had this discussion with a group of kids. It was a, it was an unfortunate situation about a young kid that was he was uh, killed with a drive by, random, useless, stupid drive by. Him and his girlfriend both uh, at a movie theater. Um, parents were there talking about it, and they, they created a foundation. Very sad situation, but the amazing part that came out of this and the learning lesson for the other kids in this leadership group was that. This wasn't just you know, sad that the parents lost a child and the family member, et cetera, but the legacy this kid left behind was amazing. They said this, they, the way they talked about him, this, this boy, a uh, young teenager, this is the guy that, that would see somebody sitting on a bench by themselves. He would go talk to them at lunchtime, invite them to the group. Maybe they're a little bit different. He wasn't afraid to talk to them. He wasn't afraid to connect people, make them feel included, whoever they were. He was that special kind of person that did that. They just like loved all the people and and he was that amazing energy and force in life that created better better situations better relationships for not just himself but everybody around him the really cool thing in the story was um the mom was talking about the, the hospital they usually they have a couple of guests and things that, that can come see you unfortunately he was in a coma first um short time before he passed but the hospital said there was over over a thousand people went through that room to say goodbye to him. How amazing is that? I mean, how how significant is your life that a thousand people in the course of a day or two pass through to see you that final time? That's again, like the, the significance of your character and your person and your legacy is, is there five people at your funeral? Or is there standing room only because you had impacted so many people in your life, right? Not every life is like that. It's not always about that. But your character is in that in that respect. That's how I think about it. It's not how much money you make. You can't take it with you. It's not how big your house was. You could live in a nice little humble house, a nice little old car. It doesn't matter. But what are you doing out in society? What's your character out there? What are you showing up as? That's one of my coach's favorite things. Who are you showing up as today? Who are you showing up? Are you lazy, uncaring, ungrateful? Or are you full of gratitude, full of love, full of amazingness? You know, nobody's perfect and it doesn't always last all day long. Uh, it was amazing this morning. I kind of had a drift and I'm coming back up. So, you know, you're all over the place. But I just what helps me is I say to myself, who am I showing up as right now? For you guys right now, I hope I'm showing up as a coach that's going to help me 
learn something, make myself better, take something better into today's world when I leave out. So um, let's kind of keep going here. The, your character has a ripple effect to it. It's a ripple effect. Think about people you know that affect other people. The kid that I just told you about, the young man that was killed. Think of his ripple effect. How many people did that guy affect and how many people will they now affect? So he's rippling positivity outwards. Negative people can suck you in. Usually you can cut that off. But somebody that's so positive energy creates that outward ripple effect that said, you ought to be like that. When you say, I want to be like that, it's not being like that person specifically. It's like the character of that person. I teach the kids, there's a big difference. Oh, I want to be like this rock star. Why? Because they're amazing at what they do. Sure. Or, oh, they got so many followers. Who cares? But what are they doing? What makes them special and talented? You know, it's that kind of thing. So if you're con committed to, you know, the ethical, compassionate living with the positivity, making positive change in something that you do, it can be little things. It doesn't always have to be big stuff. But again, what is what is that for you? How is that ripple effect happening? What are you what are you rippling to in the people um, in my fitness business? I, I always tell people, hey, if you're not a good person with positive energy, you don't have to be happy all the time because usually when you're here, you don't like me while you're here, but you love me after you leave because you feel awesome. But if you've got the negative energy or you're a downer or, you know, it's it's not conducive to the group, you're not going to last because the positive energy here will push you out. If you're not a good person, you don't get to come here. It's an invitation thing because all of the people here enjoy being here for themselves and they enjoy the other people around them that create that group of positivity. It's the ripple effect because they all have that. And it's, it's really cool to see that. It's really cool to be a part of that. Um, you know, it, in the life truly now life's complex. So, and it's always a mix of experiences. You have challenges, you have opportunities. Your character is one of those things that's at the center of both of those. When life gets tough, who are you? How do you respond? Do you shrivel up? Do you immediately get angry if things get tough? Do you start yelling at other people? I've worked with those people, worked for them, with them, had partners like that. All of a sudden, you know, they're yelling and screaming like, how is this going to help our situation? The yelling scream, nobody responds to that. They don't respond to it positively, but that's that person's character coming out because everybody's happy. Everything is good when things are good. So how are you and who are you when things aren't good? You know, when that happens, what kind of resilience do you have when things go wrong? What kind of person are you? Um, you know, because again, life's filled with challenges. There's always anticipated life's going to throw something at you every day. That is life. These kids are like, oh, you know, life is so hard. And so this me better get used to it. It's not going to change. It's not getting any easier. What gets easier is your, your character gets better. Your resilience gets stronger. Your toolbox, your personal toolbox improves to the point where you get stronger that makes life easier. It starts with the attitude. We've had the attitude discussion before. Now you take that attitude discussion, combine it with the character discussion. Now we're getting somewhere, you know, because life's not life's not a one size fits all. The conversation we're having is something different for everyone. Everybody's character is a little different. It looks different. It sounds different. It means different things. Um, but but what is that? So like every decision shapes your destiny. Everyone. So where are you going to go? Like today, um, I made a decision that I like, have a bunch of meetings. I think wow, it's going to be a crazy busy day, but. I was so excited for these meetings that they were amazing and positive that I came out of that good. I was tired. I went on to the next thing. So I was present for each one of those things, excited about them moving on to the next one. So that's creating an awesome destiny of big, big, big for me, which is really cool. It's going to come to fruition. It's happening. But but what is it going to be? You know, so how big is it going to be? Why does my character matter in that? Because if I had lousy character, hey, these people wouldn't be talking to me. They don't want to be part of what I want to do. Uh, but what I'm finding is more and more people are jumping in because they're like, hey, this is really cool. It's not about me. It's about what we're doing and how we support it from underneath with the positive character, the integrity that goes with it, uh, the education that we're providing. So defining your character. Character is really, let's go talk about it. Your character is really your personal brand. Who are you? My brand, my brand, I've taught this before, my brand is coach. You're like, who are you? What are you? What do you do? I, I coach because I have the passion for helping people. And when you coach, you teach. Coaching is education, motivation, accountability, and love. Sometimes tough love. But it's all of those things as a coach. 
And that brings me passion. So that is my brand. That's my personal brand is I see people that need, I want to help them. Um, at a, I'm just trying to decide if I want to tell you the story or not. Um, we were in church on Sunday. I was standing relatively close to the door. The lady started to pass out. I saw it happening with her husband. So I just split, ran over there, you know, help get you grabbed, you know, grabbed her by the waist, helped hold her up, get her outside, um, help through the situation. But, um, my, it was just myself and the husband. I'm thinking to myself, I, I wasn't the only one that saw this, but it, it, in those moments of time, who reacts? What's your brand? Who are you? I'm a reactor. I'm a helper. That's what I am purposed for. So that's what I do. It's not a pat on the back thing. I don't usually like to share these out loud and publicly because it's not a pat on the back thing. It's we've, my son and I have rolled up on a couple of car accidents. I say, you stay in the car, stay right here, put the hazards on. And I get out and see if I can help. I see what the situation is not to be like the guy I quietly go help typically and then do whatever needs to be done and then come back and I explain to him. I said, I go help because I can. I have been blessed with the ability to help either, you know, slightly met. I'm not medical, but I have enough training from all the things I've been doing that I can help. There's a lot of different th ways you can help, but that's my purpose. That's my passion thing is helping. That's my brand. So what is your brand? What's the vibe that you send out to the world of who you are? It's not just about being a good person. It's about consistently making the choices that align with your values and your brand. So it's like your own personal GPS. What do you do in the circumstances of life? How do you react? How do you react if there's somebody yelling and screaming at you and they're wrong and you're right? You're like, yeah, you're wrong. And now you've got a big altercation. Or do you step out, let them do the thing, go, hey, okay, I understand. Take a breath. It is so hard to take a breath these days because everybody just seems to be lit up. But it's hard to take a breath, step back understand somebody else's point and go, okay. And then de-escalate a situation. Uh, these days, everything seems to want to be escalated. But if part of your brand in your GPS of guiding is de-escalation, then that's what you do. Don't turn and run away, but you can de-escalate. I tell these kids, I'm, I'm well into my fifties and I have never stood up and just had a flat out fight to fight with somebody because I'm a de-escalator. A, I've done martial arts. I've hit people and I've been hit. I don't like being hit. I don't want to be hit out in the streets, but I don't want to hit somebody either because I know as as strong as I am, if I hit someone, I'm going to hurt him. And even in a situation that's negative, I don't want to hurt somebody either. So that kind of goes both ways. So that's kind of my the guy's my GPS thing. But if it's a bad situation, I'll turn and walk. I don't mind because the, the bigger, stronger person is not the one that stands there and fights something out. It's the person that walks away. The person says, thank you very much, turns around and walks away. And then and then lets it go. Right. That's the stronger person. So your character is your brand. So think about what is your brand? Who are you? How do you show up for that? Oh, my light just changed. My natural lighting just changed. Um, that's right. Let's keep rolling. Um, so so why should you care about this character? What does it matter? You're like, OK, that's nice. Um, you're really cruising through your life, but the really character is the fuel that keeps you going. It keeps your engine going. It keeps you going. Without it, you could just be out there with a whole bunch of regrets. Oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. A lot of the should, as we talked about that, I got a coach that says, don't should on yourself. I'm like, what? He said, don't should on yourself, meaning don't keep going, I should have done this. I should have done that. That's a negative mindset. That implants all those things in your mind that are negative uh, for you that are not going to help you. So we get away from those. So get away from those regrets with that. Uh, make the decisions that you're good with. Think something through. So what's your brand? What do you bring into it? And how do you want people to see you at the end? How do you want to say, oh, that you want them to describe you? Um, so how does it matter? Still, it's the secret sauce to your success. Let me say that again. I cover my face. It's the secret sauce to your success. Um, I've worked with people, like I said, I've been a long corporate career as well. There's people that, that you want to be around these people. They're awesome people. They got great character. They're stout people. Yeah, I want to be around those people. There's people that you don't want to be around. Think about their character. It's negative. They're selfish. They're self-absorbed. They're all about themselves, could be. Um, that's the people you don't want to be around so much. Um, so think about that. Which, which one of those are you delivering to your group? Um, so moving on. So think about this like some real life. Uh, heroes and things, athletes, artists, leaders, whomever, TV personalities, 
this with some funny ones, the people in your life, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a boss. Uh, I got an old boss that was amazing. Um, definitely wanted to be like this guy because, oh, there we go. Now I'm back because he was, he was that guy. He was that guy you wanted to be around, always pumping people up, educating you. I've never had a boss that said, hey, bring your resume in here. Let's make sure your resume is good to go for your next job. I'm like, what? You want to do my resume? Isn't that a little out of the ordinary? He knew that we had such a good relationship that I wasn't going anywhere. And if I did, it would be with him. So he knew that ahead of time. So it was fine. But it, he still had that kind of character of, you know, helping his team out. He was all about the team, helping other people. He looked good because he helped other people look good. And it came down to that. And he got it. I didn't in the same department. And there's another uh, managing person that was I, 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 I. It was all about the I. And people always looked at him because they knew it was not an I. It wasn't him doing a lot of the stuff. It was the team pulling him. And everybody knew it. So, you know, again, this, the character difference in there is clearly different. Uh, one of the uh, easy ones that most people understand is like Michael Jordan because in Michael Jordan, the basketball world is legendary, but he didn't get it legendary because he could shoot hoops. He was great. He's got a ton of records. He was amazing. It was amazing to watch, but what really made him stand out that people really talk about when you get into it is his work ethic, his work ethic. The way he you know, shows up early, stays late, this stuff over and over and over practice where other people wouldn't. He showed up. He was resilient. If something didn't work, he just kept going at it. And his sportsmanship that went with it. This isn't the guy getting in fights and things. This is the guy stepping up and stepping out. Occasionally it happens. But, you know, but his work ethic, the way he approached things, handled things, and his resilience, that's what made him stand up and out. Big difference right there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So really it comes down to your character is your superpower. Who you are, how you behave. Um the choices that you make, what you deliver to the world, how you show up in life, who you show up as. Now, this applies, this applies to any age, too. Your kids. How do your kids show up as? Are they snotty, bratty, selfish little kids that don't want to help with anything? Or are they, are they loving, at least mostly respectful? Their kids are going to stand out. My kid is amazing. I love my son to death. He's amazing. But he, he tests me on purpose. And we have that discussion. You're testing me, aren't you? He's like, mm-hmm. But he does it on purpose. He knows it. I know what I know in crunch time. I know who he's going to show up as. He's going to show up as the character person. Doesn't always show it in the house because the kids don't do that in the home. If you're a parent, you have a kid, you're probably nodding your head right now. Yeah, no, my kid does not do that at home. I always like to make a point to my son's friend's parents to tell them how their kid behaves when they're with me. Because I'm pretty sure they're not doing that at home because they will get in the car and say, hey, thanks for taking me somewhere. But we haven't even left yet. What I grew up, it was make sure you tell somebody thank you when they drop you off, at least at that part. These kids thank you in the beginning. Hey, thanks for bringing me along. I'm like, whoa, you're welcome. And it's please thank you, yes sir, no ma'am, all the way through, very respectful and amazing. And I tell their parents, like, that's my kid? I'm like, yeah, that's your kid, so you're doing a good job. Don't judge them by the house behavior. Judge them by the public behavior. You know, there's always different things, but it, it's truly amazing. But be sure and share that with people. Let people know if somebody is doing something well, if their character is solid, if you notice these things, especially the young people, share it with them. Hey, notice, notice you did this solid um, kids in the in the gym. I don't go to the gym anymore. It's horrible. Um, that was not probably a little out of context for you guys. Um but the kids in the gym, a lot of times, are they just doing they'll do a set on something and they'll sit and they get on their phone and sit on a machine. Like, okay, hey, can I work in? They're like, what? I got a couple more sets to go. That's nice. So do I. How about if we share? You go, and then I go, and you go, and then I go. They're like, they're totally foreign to this whole sharing, working in concept. But again, that's something old school. My son says vintage. I say old school. It's old school manners. It's old school courtesy. Those things matter. So in today's society, too, manners, courtesy, and the golden rule. It's one of my favorite chapters in the new book. Um, it is manners, courtesy, and the golden rule. You know, you live with those three things, your character automatically gets better. Those are building blocks to a solid character. Good manners. Yes, please. No, thank you. It's so simple, so effortless, but it separates you from other people. It separates your kids from other kids. Um, and it, it's amazing. So keep those things in mind as you go through. You see each situation as an opportunity. Is it going to build my character or am I going to let the others half of my character go? We all have both. Every one of us has both the good character, the not so good character. I got it. 
I can be just as much of a, a jerk as the next person. But in your mind, you got to make that really quick split decision to say, which person am I going to be right now? Which character am I going to show up as? And it's a practice art. You got to practice over and over and over. You're going to be challenged daily over and over and over. Because again, that's what life is. It's going to keep swinging. You got to stand up. It swings, you stand up. That's that's part of your resilience. That's part of coming back after it. So I challenge you now. So think about your character. Write down your three top character points. What are they for you? What are those aspects? What's something that you maybe can work on? Jot that down. Jot it down. Look at it today. Look at it again tomorrow. But keep it present uh, in, in your mind. Think about it. How can you be better to help other people be better? See, we're talking about living empowered. This show is called Coach Grace Living Empowered. Living empowered is doing things that make you better, that makes somebody else better, that makes society better. That's an empowered life. You don't have to be like out there with the bullhorn talking, but just your actions. People see how you behave. Even if you're quiet, they'll see you. They'll see what you do. They'll benefit from what you do. And that's what matters. So that's really about character and living a power empowered goes right there. So at that point, I'm going to leave it right there. We're going to head into the kitchen in just a minute, cooking with a coach. So I hope you take something away from this show with yourself today. How does that self-character work? You can share this with somebody. If you do share with somebody, let them determine their own character. Don't go, hey, you know what? You're like this. You're like that. Because that's going to that's a character opportunity right there. Be this person or be that person. Don't be the finger pointy person. Give them an opportunity to say, hey, check this out. We can have some character growth together. Sometimes it's a good conversation. Sometimes it's rough. But, you know, don't be afraid of it. It's all about, you know, life. You're going to be okay. Everything's going to be good. So we're going to be right back in just a minute. Cooking with the coach. Got some good. I got the, uh, it's the after holidays. There's nothing in my fridge. There's nothing to eat here. I keep hearing that in my house. So we're going to go with it. It's the guy. There's nothing to eat in the house. We're going to create something from all the stuff in the house. So we're going to create some really good food, um, good snacks, good stuff. So stay with me on Living Empowered. We will be right back. Everybody, we're back with cooking with coach hey how many times in your house have either you your family members or if you got kids they come on like open the fridge open the cupboards or walk around go there's nothing to eat in this house have you said it yeah a million times anybody else heard it yeah i think i heard it yesterday however is that really the case no what that means is uh oh, there's nothing really quick and easy for me to grab and take out or around here i'm too lazy to make my own sandwich or i don't feel like being creative or any number of things but really that's not the case so what i did today is i'm like you know what let's address that because it happens all the time instead of making some flashy meal we made a lot of fun snacks and i got some more cool stuff coming but today i'm like you know what let me just go through my fridge and say okay if i walk in here my son and his buddies walk in they go oh there's nothing to eat blah blah blah, like blah, blah for sure Let's whoop up a couple snacks. So we're going to make some more grown-up-ish snacks or healthy snacks. I don't know if I can get the kids to eat one of these, but um, well, some of his buddies might. But then we'll make another one that's more kid-friendly that almost all of them will eat. Super simple. Most of the time you got the ingredients. So let's kind of jump into this. So let's start with the adult one first, the kid one, the healthy one, whatever you want to call it. I just say adult because my kid, I don't think he's going to eat this stuff. So anyway, so I went through the fridge. And this week, I've been making some really cool stuff. We made pork chops one night uh, with some veggies. We made I made burgers one night. But with the burgers, there was a bunch of leftover, like the leafy lettuce and tomatoes and onions. That stuff's leftover because I just got the pack thing. So there's a bunch of that in there. So I'm like, hey, what do we got? I'm like, well, check it. I got these really big pieces of nice dark green lettuce. Now, if you've not heard me talk about lettuce before, here's the quick lettuce discussion. The dark green lettuce is the only lettuce that's decent. 
Uh, dark green means there is some nutrient value in it. The lighter iceberg type lettuce, that's filler. There's no nutritional value in that lettuce. It's filler. Usually that's lettuce is used when you're making a salad bomb, which would be salad, uh, meat, cheese, croutons, dressing, whatever other junk you throw in there. Now you have a salad bomb. That iceberg lettuce just holds it together. It's like glue and filler. So if you're eating lettuce, try to get the dark green. Dark green, spinach, those kind of things, those have nutritional value, better roughage to them. So we're going to start with that after that long discussion. Uh, look what I found. Like a really good piece of lettuce. So I'm digging for some more. Um, lately, a go-to thing for me, our grocery store has rotisserie chicken. They already take it. It's in a package. They take it off the bone. It's in small pieces. I'm like, this is amazing. It's all purpose. It can be used for a ton of different things. I like to keep a bucket of that here. It's a good snack for me. It's easy protein, easy digestible. It's definitely on my list of things to keep consuming. Like I said, it goes into salads. It goes into sandwiches. It goes into whatever you're making. Throw it in a soup. Really versatile and easy. So, ooh, under this happy tortilla is uh, is some chicken. So I'm going to take some of this chicken right here. So basically, we're going to make some lettuce wrap. I found this awesome piece of lettuce. So let's fill this thing up. So I got that. Now, what I didn't go digging for in the cupboard. There's, I'm pretty sure we have some olives and some uh, sun-dried tomatoes and those kind of things as well that you could put in here. So it depends on how much flavor you want, how much you want to load it. What I'm also going to drop in here on that same hamburger plate was onions. I'm good with the onions. Onions have good, good nutritional properties to them. It's good for some of your blood. If it bothers your digestion, don't eat them. Um, I'm usually good with them or saute them. Sometimes that's a better way to go. So I'm going to go with the red onion on this one. We have the red onion and the white. Just sprinkle a little bit of red onion on here. So now I got some chicken and onions. It's starting to shape up. So there's some flavor right there. The chicken, when I get it at the store, is pretty bland. It's just rotisserie chicken, not a lot of seasoning spices. So you can use it for whatever you want. It's multi-purpose chicken. It's excellent. I love that. Here we go. Let me make a mess on the counter. That's always good for me later. Honey, did you mess up the counter? Sure, I did. Okay, so I got chicken, I got onions. I'm like, okay, what else is going to make this delicious? I'm a meat and cheese guy for sure. So there's my chicken. Oh, we had some salami. We had a party, so we had to like the short term thing here. Oh, I made an Italian dinner the other night, and we made a antipasto. So sometimes we go with the you know, try to go the less sodium on the salamis and things. We didn't have a ton of it, but just enough to make a nice accent to the salad with a bit of an antipasto. Again, had some left over, so. I got a little bit of salami, a little bit of pepperoni. So again, I'm not going to take a lot and put it in this lettuce. I'm just going to drip, drip, drip. I'm going to lay a couple of these in here. So again, I'm kind of keeping the calories at a, at a decent amount. All right. And of course, if we're having uh, antipasta, we can't have it without provolone. So there's a little bit of provolone. So now I, what I'm kind of end up with a, a chicken, onion, salami, provolone. It's delicious. Ooh, hey, one more thing, because I made a awesome uh, baked ziti the other night as well. I got a little bit of Italian sausage. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Italian sausage. Again, not a lot. We're not overloading this thing. We're just making a nice flavor, good snack, some decent amount of protein, good dark greens. There we go. Excellent. So I got a little bit of sausage. Let's see what's under the happy tortilla as well. All right, we're going to go with that. So, like I said, you can put whatever you want in this. You go find the lettuce. You start with that as your bed, and you go find, start finding stuff. Just start pulling out of the fridge. That works for me. doesn't work for everybody at my house, but it works for me. So, now I've got this nice lettuce wrap full of flavor. Now, if I want, I can dribble a little bit of Italian in here. Make this thing. You know what? I will because I know as soon as I hit end on this recording, I'm going to eat this. You know I'm going to eat this. So I'm going to put, again, not a lot. You put too much in here, and you're dribbling it all over yourself. So just a little bit for flavoring, just a few drips. There we go, a few drops of that. Now we've got Italian. Now we basically made a nice little Italian lettuce wrap. Awesome. So there we go, it's that simple. It took us only a few minutes. So again, I'm just finding stuff in the fridge. Hey, this sounds good. Hey, that sounds good. Let's check the cover. Do you have olives? Do you have sun-dried tomatoes? What do you got? And just create something. It's not hard. Uh, go to you can always go to Pinterest and find recipes and things. But I just decided today, you know what? Let's just go to the pantry in the cupboard and see what we've got. Let's make something happen. Right off the top of my head, there it is. So that's a pretty good looking lettuce wrap right there. Full of flavor, full of goodness. That's going to be tasty and low carb. I'm trimming back on my carbs this new year. 
we're trimming down 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 a handful of pounds already gonna keep trimming it down so that's good for me now the kids you say what about the kids all right you notice the griddle's out i love using the griddle i found this is a gluten-free herb spinach and herb tortilla now that sounds like ooh, but gluten-free you can't really tell once you put stuff in it the spinach and herb is actually really good it doesn't taste spinachy so when the kids go oh it's green you tell them oh that's an alien tortilla make something up make it fun make it interesting for them They'll go, they'll laugh and they'll laugh and giggle and whatever, and it'll be all good. Now, I don't do butter. I don't do oil. I just dry, I dry heat these because it works. So again, I'm going to use some of those same ingredients that I had. I have other cheeses, but I'm just going to lay this one out since we're going with the Italian theme. I'm going to lay this one out as a little bit of a wrap. So a slice of provolone. Again, if my kids are eating this, they're going to eat this. Slice of provolone. One slice, of, one slice of pepperoni. So we're not, oh, again, we're not overdoing it. Again, the, keep this stuff lower sodium. If you can get the no nitrates, no nitrites, that's the way to go for sure. Keep that stuff out of the kids' bodies. That causes all kinds of health problems later. If they get too much of that stuff, processed foods are bad. So again, I'm going to almost do the same thing for them that we did with us, but we put ours into the lettuce wrap. Theirs, we're going to put in this tortilla. This grill is already hot and cooking. So as, ooh, oh yeah, it is. So as that gets hot and that cheese gets ready, so it's going to be nice and crispy. I'm going to triple fold this. So they got a little enchilada looking easy to eat sandwich. And look at how fast this thing, look at how fast this cooks. So don't know if your kids cook, don't cook. This is something I'll tell my son and his buddies. There's the grill. Go find your ingredients and put it together. These guys can do it. And if they choose to, they can throw some bread on here, make sandwiches out of this. They can, I, I found the tortilla. I'd rather eat something like this tortilla because it's, it's gluten-free, less calories, less carbs. Um, and it's got some little bit of nutritional value to it. And, you know, we put all those amazing ingredients in here. I'm going to take it. I'm going to flip it. Kids, if you're watching this, don't flip with your fingers. This is hot. Do not burn yourself. No, coach doesn't always do it the right way. And I would be getting yelled at if there was anybody else here watching me. Use the spatula. We'll just pretend we just heard that. Use the spatula. Yes, dear. So let's do that. We'll do a proper. Here's this spatula. I got it. So I don't burn myself either. So let's get nice and crispy on the outside. Again, you don't need to fry these. They don't need to be butter. They don't need the oil. You don't need the extra fat, unnecessary fats. This thing is starting to turn a little bit more white, a little lighter green. That means it's getting done. Cheese is melting. Ooh, I can smell the meat. The sausage getting warm. All those flavors are uh, blending together. Now, I do have a little bit of hot sauce over here. So if they like it spicy, you can open that back up, dribble some spice inside. You can leave it as it is if they like it that way. Uh, whatever you like to do. There's so many different ways to do this. Like I said, what do you find in your fridge? What's there? What's in the fridge? What's in the cupboard? Don't get stressed about it. Someone's like, oh, my gosh, you don't have anything. Uh, if you approach it that way, you're going to start e exhausted from the get-go, and it's going to be a challenge for you. If you come in going, I know we've got stuff. I know I can make something. There's a whole bunch of choices of things I had in here. Like I had some, I found some rice. I found some other things. I'm like, wow, there's, I got so many things I could suddenly cook. I'm like, no, let's keep it simple today. Just go with a super quick lettuce wrap. It's that fast because we're all about convenience. And for us, let's, let's be healthy. Um, as much as you can get your kids to eat it healthy too, please do. So like I said, the lettuce wrap, super quick, super convenient, super delicious. That's for us. We've got the little tortilla wrap. That thing is done. I'm going to turn this off. And again, that was that fast. Boom. 10 minutes. We just made kids snacks. Now this too, you can line a whole bunch of these up so you can feed a bunch of kids at one time. Or your kid is eating a couple of them. They're done. They're good to go. And I still have more stuff left over. So again, use your ingredients. Use your leftovers. Uh, don't be afraid to be creative. So cooking is all about being creative. Try this, try that. My son's learning to cook. We're like, how did you like that? Maybe you need a little bit more of this. Maybe you need more of that. I'm like, awesome. He's learning to, to, to be that, but it's okay. Sometimes you make stuff that's kind of eh, sometimes you don't. But overall, this is a great snack. I'm looking forward to having some of this. So thanks, guys, for being here. Hopefully that helped you. Just giving you some uh, some ideas, some, some thought provokers to see what you make. Uh, shoot me an email, shoot me a text, leave me a comment. Let me know what your go-to is. What's in your fridge? Hey, what's in your wallet? No, I didn't do the commercial, but let me know what's in your fridge. Let us know what you make, how you, how you pulled stuff together. And we'll look forward to seeing it on the next show. So until the next one, be fit, be strong, stay empowered.